NRI Banking and Investment Opportunities. We all know an Indian citizen who stays abroad for employment or carrying on a business or vocation outside India or stays abroad under circumstances indicating an intention for an uncertain duration of stay abroad is a non-resident. Non-resident foreign citizens of Indian origin are treated on par with non-resident Indian citizens NRIs. In this lesson, we will define the meaning of NRI, describe features of NRO, NRI and FCNR, acknowledge government policy for investment by the NRIs and define investment options for the NRIs. After going through this presentation, you should be able to define NRIs, explain the features of FCNR, NRE, NRO accounts, discuss the liberalized policy framework, describe the shares and securities, loans and drafts, immovable property and remittance facilities and discuss the philanthropy by non-governmental organizations. The term NRI, non-residential Indians, refers to a section of people having Indian origin but residing outside India. NRI banking is done to attract NRIs to carry out financial transactions like depositing amounts and other remittance into India through banking channels. NRI banking was introduced by the Government of India in 1970 to bolster the balance of payments between Indian banks and NRIs through non-resident or external account rules which are governed by the exchange control regulations. Funds held in these kinds of accounts enjoy certain provisions like tax exemptions, free repatriation facilities, etc. A bank account held by a person designated as NRI in India is designated as an ordinary non-resident account, NRO account. NRI banking in India is maintained by banks that hold official authorized dealers license from the Reserve Bank of India. The financial budget for 2007-08 extends NRI accounts to regional rural banks, RRBs as well. This would boost the economical growth in areas like Bihar, Kerala and Central India where the financial regulation as of now has been stagnant. NRI banking facilitates the NRI customer to open the following types of accounts. 1. NRE – Non-Residential External Account 2. NRO – Non-Residential Ordinary Account 3. FCNRB foreign currency non-residential bank account. All NRIs are permitted by the Reserve Bank of India to open all these accounts except for people residing in Pakistan or Bangladesh as they would need special permission. Joint accounts of two or more non-residents and nomination facility are permitted. The NRE account is opened in the form of savings, current or fixed deposits in Indian rupees. For features and currency used in NRO, NRE and FCNR, go through the table given in this slide. The government attaches importance to investments by NRIs. Government has provided a liberalized policy framework for approval of NRI investments through both the automatic and the government route. NRIs are permitted to invest up to 100% equity in the real estate and civil aviation sectors. Government approval is required for all proposals not qualifying under the automatic route. Proposals for conversion of NRI investment into repatriable equity are hitherto being considered by the FIPB for approval. The government took several steps in the current year in the area of foreign direct investment FDI, in future pursuit of its already committed path of policy transparency and liberalization in FDI. FDI cap in the domestic airline sector has been enhanced from 40% to 49% and NRI investment is permitted up to 100% with no direct or indirect equity participation by the foreign airlines.
guidelines for approval of foreign or technical collaborations for project with existing joint venture or collaboration in the same field have been reviewed. As a measure towards simplification of the existing procedures in FDI, the following activities have been placed on the general permission route of RBI. Transfer of shares in an existing Indian company from residents to non-residents and vice versa, except in the financial sector and where SEBI takeover code is attracted. Conversion of ECB or loan into equity provided the activity is covered under the automatic route and the foreign equity after such conversion falls within the sectoral cap. Conversion of preference shares into equity provided the increase in foreign equity participated is within the sectoral cap and the activity is the automatic route and conversion of non-repatriable equity invested by NRIs in foreign exchange into repatriable equity allowed under the automatic route provided the original investment was made in foreign exchange under the FDI scheme notified under the FEMA regulation and the sector or activity in which the investment is proposed to be converted into repatriable equity is on the automatic route for FDI. Schedule 2 and 3 of the notification number FEMA 22000 RB contains provisions relating to portfolio investment by NRIs. OCBs are not allowed to make fresh investments in India under the portfolio investment scheme wide notification number FEMA 46 dated 29th November 2001. Further, in September 2003, RBI has banned OCBs from investing in any manner in India. In fact, the category of OCB has been abolished. However, they can continue to hold and sell shares purchased before 29th November 2001. Portfolio investment is covered by general permission subject to following condition or provisions. Investment is permitted on repatriation as well as non-repatriation basis. Purchases, sale of shares, preference and equity and or convertible debentures are covered. Purchase or sale is done through a registered broker of a recognized stock exchange. All transaction of sales and purchase must be delivery based. Speculative transactions are not allowed. Sales proceeds of investment held on repatriation basis can be credited to NRE, oblique FCNR, oblique NRO account after payment of applicable taxes. Existing OCBs that is prior to September 16, 2003 must intimate the designated bank branch immediately on the holding or interest of NRIs in the OCB becoming less than 60%. NRIs are allowed to enter into forward contracts to hedge their investment made in India. NRI is also permitted to invest in exchange traded derivative contracts approved by SEBI from time to time out of this rupee funds held in India on non repatriable basis, subject to the limits prescribed by SEBI. NRIs can also invest without limit on repatriable basis in government dated securities treasury bills, units of domestic mutual funds, bonds issued by PSUs, shares in public sector enterprises which are being disinvested by government. They can also invest without limit on repatriable basis in government dated securities, treasury bills, units of domestic mutual funds, units of money market mutual funds. However, NRIs are not permitted to make investments in small savings schemes including PPF, borrowing in foreign exchange by residents. There is general permission to borrow up to US dollar 250,000 or its equivalent in foreign exchange on a repatriable basis by an individual resident from his close relatives as defined in Section 6 of the Companies Act. Outside India, subject to the loan is free of interest. The minimum maturity period of the loan is one year and the amount of loan is received by inward remittance in free foreign exchange through normal banking channels or by debit to the NRE or FCNR account of the non-resident lender. Non-repatriable borrowing in rupees by residence.
a resident not being a company incorporated in India may borrow in rupees on non-repatriation basis from NRI or PIO subject to the term of the loan shall not exceed three years and the loan has to be utilized for meeting the borrower's personal requirement or for his business purposes and under no circumstances be used for relending or for investment in shares, securities or immovable property. Loan in rupees against shares or immovable property. Authorized dealers, ADs, may grant loan in rupees to NRIs against the security of shares or immovable property in India for personal or business purposes and housing loans against the security of houses or flats to be acquired for residential accommodation in India. Loan against NRE, FCNR and NRO since the account holder can withdraw from NRE saving deposits at any time, banks should not mark any type of lien, direct or indirect, against these deposits. Under FEMA regulations, a foreign citizen who is a resident in India can purchase immovable property in India without any approval from RBI. He is also not required to file any declaration at the time of purchase of such immovable property. Citizens of eight countries, namely Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, China, Iran, Nepal or Bhutan, whether resident in India or not, are prohibited from acquiring or transferring any IP in India without prior approval of the RBI. However, such a prohibition is not applicable to IP acquired on lease for a period not exceeding five years. Investment in agricultural property, plantation and farmhouse is prohibited for all classes of persons resident outside India be it NRIs or OCBs or foreign citizens or other foreign entities. NRIs or PIOs can freely rent out their immovable property whether purchased through application of forex or otherwise, without seeking any permission from the RBI. The rental income, being a current account transaction, is repatriable outside India only if proper tax is paid or provided for, where the house is purchased through housing finance and the house is rented out. The entire rental income, even if it is more than the prescribed installment, should be adjusted towards repayment of the loan. Remittance of capital assets in India held by a person, whether resident in, in or outside India, would require approval of the Reserve Bank except to the extent provided in the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, FEMA or rules or regulations made under the Act. NRI or PIO may remit up to $1. 1 million per year out of the balance in his non-resident ordinary account or sale proceeds of assets inclusive of inheritance or settlement. There is no lock-in period for sale of residential property purchased by NRI or PIO out of foreign exchange. Remittance of the current income like rent, dividend, pension, interest, etc of NRIs or PIOs who do not maintain NRO account is freely allowed on the basis of appropriate certification by a chartered accountant, certifying that the amount proposed to be remitted is eligible for remittance. Banks may issue international credit cards to NRIs or PIOs without prior approval of the RBI. Any organization working for a social, cultural, economic, educational or religious cause is termed as an NGO. NGOs have made favorable indents to needy sections of Indian society at par with the constantly changing socio-economic climate. NGOs have reached out to all sections of society including women, children, pavement dwellers, unorganized workers, youth, slum dwellers and landless laborers. An NGO can be formed under various legal identities. Society registered under Society's Registration Act 1860. Trust formed under the Trust Deed and registered with Income Tax Authority. 
and Limited Company Incorporated under Section 25 of the Companies Act 1956. A society is formed when people come together to do something with some common purpose, which is legal and useful for others. A society should generally not get into profit-making activities. A charitable trust is a legal entity which can be set up by anyone who has decided to commit themselves in principle to setting aside some of their assets or income for charitable causes. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. NRI accounts cannot be opened or operated by a power of attorney holder in India on behalf of the NRI. Right or wrong? Right. Under FEMA regulations, a foreign citizen who is a resident in India can purchase immovable property in India without any approval from RBI. Right or wrong? Right. NRIs are permitted to invest up to 78% equity in the real estate and civil aviation sectors. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The term NRI, non-residential Indians, refers to a section of people having Indian origin but residing outside India. NRI banking is done to attract NRIs to carry out financial transactions like depositing amounts and other remittance into India through banking channels. NRI banking in India is maintained by banks that hold official authorized dealers license from the Reserve Bank of India. The financial budget for 2007-08 extends NRI accounts to regional rural banks RRBs as well. This would boost the economical growth in areas like Bihar, Kerala and Central India where the financial regulation as of now has been stagnant. The government attaches importance to investments by NRIs. Government has provided a liberalized policy framework for approval of NRI investment through both the automatic and the government route. Investment is permitted on repatriation as well as non-repatriation basis. Purchases, sales of shares, preference and equity and or convertible debentures are covered. Purchase or sale is done through a registered broker of a recognized stock exchange. Loan in rupees against shares or immovable property. Authorized dealers may grant loan in rupees to NRIs against the security of shares or immovable property in India for personal or business purposes and housing loans against the security of houses or flats to be acquired for residential accommodation in India. Under FEMA regulations, a foreign citizen who is a resident in India can purchase immovable property in India without any approval from RBI. NRIs or PIOs can freely rent out their immovable property, whether purchased through an application of Forex or otherwise, without seeking any permission from the RBI. An NGO can be formed under various legal identities. Society registered under Societies Registration Act 1860. Trust formed under the Trust Deed and registered with Income Tax Authority and Limited Company Incorporated under Section 25 of the Companies Act 1956.